so we've used the brake to make our bends. It looks nice and even, so we're in good shape. Uh, now, if you guys have any questions about this part, I'm gonna have you ask staff or feel free to email me, okay? Now we're gonna move on to the bottom part. So I'm going to flip my drawing over. Again, have a quick look at it. So materials in aluminum. I'm gonna grab my material from the basic two drawer. And this time it's the bar stock. I can tell because in my drawing, it says a half inch. This is a half of an inch, okay? So looking at my drawing, I'm gonna again go for my dimensions. I have two inches by one inch by half inch. So this is two inches. We know it's a half inch, so I must mark at one inch. So again, taking my caliper, going to one inch on the zero, locking the top lock. I'm gonna do the same thing. It's just a little bit thicker material. So my point is on the back edge of the material and I'm just gonna pull across, okay? Um, this one's not a bad idea to get a couple scribes on there. We wanna have that clear line for when we go to the horizontal bandsaw, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and head over to the horizontal bandsaw. And this is the horizontal bands. Uh, this is definitely one of the cooler, cooler tools in the shop. Uh, I can cut, cut heavy material fairly quickly. So uh, a bandsaw is gonna be a blade that's moving around in a circle. Uh, what's a little bit different about this one is these blade guards actually take and they twist the blade so the cutting face is addressing your material. Uh, when we do this, uh, we're gonna make sure our material is appropriately clamped we're cutting at the right speed and that our blade guard is appropriate. So when I do this, I need to lift up the bandsaw and I'm going to lock the little feed rate control valve, okay? The feed rate control valve controls how fast this goes down. Uh, it's a pneumatic cylinder, so when air escapes, when we open this up, this little pin moves out of the way, it starts moving down. If you over tighten it, you jam the pin in and you can damage it. This is the gateway to the shop. So if this breaks, that means parts stop happening. So please, 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 no force on the feed rate control valve, okay? So I have it up. I'm going to take my material. I'm gonna come through the back or come around back. I'm gonna push it through the vise here, okay? I can take this little uh, handle here, open it and slide the vise open or closed. So I want to get closed and then lock it back in place. When I lock it back in place, this handle here will tighten it so we're nice and tight so it won't move while we're cutting it. I want it to be loose right now because I need to address, I need to line up with the line. So when I'm lining up with the line, I'm going to bring this down slowly and I'm gonna get as close as I can without touching the material, okay? So I'll move this in. Maybe a little closer. And I wanna be really aware of my kerf, okay? Kerf is gonna be the material that is taken away during a cut. So when I am like, Cutting this, I know the kerf is a sixteenth of an inch. So if I cut, you know, on the wrong side of the line, I'm gonna be either too wide or too small. So make sure that you're cutting the appropriate place. So once I know I'm in a good spot, I'm gonna tighten this up. So put a little force on it, you wanna be tight. I'm gonna lift this back up. And I need to make sure that this guide is as close to the material as I can without hitting the vise. So there's a handle in here, I can unlock it, and this actually allows it to move back and forth. There we go. So we'll lock that back in place. Um, that gives rigidity to the blade. That means we're gonna have a nice cut without it drifting inside the material. 
When I'm ready to cut, which I'm tight here, our guard is good, I will turn on the green button. When I turn on the green button, I'm waiting for coolant to flow. If I don't see coolant, don't do it, okay? So we'll turn this on. So there's our coolant flowing. Again, I'm back at the feed rate control valve. And I'm gonna go slow, or I can speed up to go down, but I'm gonna go really slow in the material. I don't wanna crash it. Uh, when, once I'm in my material, uh, I can speed up a little bit, depending on the hardness of the material. If the saw ever starts bouncing, or squealing, or smoking, uh, you're going way too fast. So slow it down, okay? I'm gonna let it cut all the way through, and when I do, it'll turn itself off, which is awesome. And then I just grab my part. This part has quite a burr. You wanna be careful pulling it out. It is like a razor blade right here, okay? Once we're done, uh, unclamp your material. All right, we made our cut on the bandsaw. Um, you guys can see we have a pretty serious burr here, and this is, can be fairly sharp. So I want you to be careful when you're handling it and pulling it off the saw and as you're carrying it around. So we have to deburr. This one works well with the file. Uh, when you deburr this, I want you to give it a good um, kind of force here going back and forth. I want you to be careful not to hit your knuckles, okay, because you're holding on to it. Uh, but you can see that little bit of force is starting to break the burr off. And I'm not having to like really work it. So I'm just gonna kind of keep going and we'll see it all kind of break off. Um, now, this is the same thing. You can kind of work at an angle. You can round the edge, but we're looking for a soft finish that won't cut you or the staff. Um, and then, work the whole thing around. Once you've deburred it appropriately, we're going to measure and mark for our holes. So I'm gonna just kind of clean some of this off for a second, put my file away, and I'm gonna look at the drawing again. So when I look at the drawing now, we've cut our dimensions. Now we need to measure and mark our locations. Now this is something that you guys know how to do. Some things that I do want you to be aware of is as we're going to cut our holes, what drill bit do we need to use? So we can see it says 3 16 depth here, uh, that, or 3 16 bit and a quarter inch depth. That is a blind hole, that is not a through hole. The next hole is here on the side, uh, here. Uh, those say four 1032 taps. Uh, not everybody knows what that is, and that's at a three quarter inch depth. So when it says 1032 tap, that means we need to make a hole and thread the hole so screws can go into it, okay? So I can look at this chart that's in your packet. I'm gonna go ahead and change the page here. When I look at this chart, I can see that I have drill size, the decimal equivalent, and then tap size. So it said a 1032 tap. I'm gonna go down my tap column and I'm gonna find a 1032 tap. We're gonna look directly to the left. Our decimal equivalent is 0 0.1590. The drill bit size is number 21, okay? There are three types of drill bits on here. We have fractional, we have numbers, and we have letters, okay? So you use the right one, otherwise the tap doesn't work and you will fail. Um, so I know I need a number 21 drill bit. Um, and if I actually look into my super awesome basic two checkout kit, I can see that there is a number 21 drill bit. Now, before we drill anything on the drill press, you need to use a center drill. 
The center drill is gonna do a couple things for you. It's gonna line up your hole, okay? It's gonna give us a little bit of a pilot hole, and then it's gonna give us a little bit of a chamfer. And that chamfer is gonna let the, the screw head go in. That chamfer is going to allow the drill bit to fall in easier. Um, so you wanna use this every time. So when you use this, I want you to only go halfway up the chamfer. You don't wanna drill a hole with this. There are different size drills uh, that are gonna be used for whatever size drill bit you end up using, okay? Um, any questions? Feel free to ask staff or email me and I will get my drill bit, my tap, my tap handle, which we'll talk about, and we'll head in to the drill press. All right, so we're on to the drill press. I have my part that's measured, marked, and center punch. I'm gonna grab my number two center drill because that's where I need to be, and then my number 21 because that's what's appropriate for my tapping. Then we'll head over to the drill press. So go ahead and put these here. And now I'm gonna actually set up my material. And when I set up my material, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. One would be with parallels. Parallels are precision ground pieces of metal that are going to be parallel to each other. Uh, so when I put them in the vise, uh, they will sit flat, which is fantastic. Um, so I would set it up like that, get it nice and tight. Uh, now if I drill a through hole, I won't hit anything because it's just hollow underneath it. Uh, quick pro tip is wipe down your parallels, wipe down your vise because chips can actually be a big factor in making things not measure right. Um, since we're doing the flat part here, I will set it so it's flat here and I'm on the flat side of the vise. Notice that sometimes your vise will have a void in the middle. Just be aware of where you're setting it unless you don't, unless you want it to be a little crooked. So I'll get that nice and tight. Uh, whatever you do, do not drill into the vise or the table. So if you're going to drill into something, put a sacrificial piece of material, a piece of wood, another piece of metal. Just make sure you're not putting anything there. Uh, so let's set up our tool. So I will grab my center drill. Uh, when I put my center drill in the teeth of the chuck, the teeth will open and close as I spin this. I wanna put it on the flat part here. That's called the shank. If I'm on this little kind of open area, that's the flute, that's one of the cutting faces. It can be a problem. So I wanna put it on the shank above the flute. And I wanna make sure that I'm centered here. I'm not gonna be kicked sideways. Once I've got it hand tight, I'm gonna take and I'm going to put the chuck key in and I'm gonna rotate it so it's nice and tight. Good practice is to do three sides. So you just push it in and rotate. By the time you get to the third side, it's gonna be super tight. If you've taken out backlash, there's no doubt that it's gonna work. So now I can line up my, my part I can use these dials to do so. Um, the table is a little short for this. So if you need to raise the table, I'm going to take this, excuse me, uh, this part here, unlock it, and then I'm going to raise the table here. So a good thing to like, kind of be aware of is backlash. Uh, backlash is basically the space between the gears. Uh, so when I'm raising this, I'm putting force on the gears. If I'm going up, it's gonna not slip down. But if I'm going down and there's space there and I put force here, it can push it down into that space and you lose your accuracy. So always stop moving it in the up direction. So I'll lock that back in place. And then I am going to line myself up, bring this down and look at it. I'm super close, there you go. So I am clamped, my tool is in the machine. 
I'm ready to drill, I just need to know the speed. So when I set my speed, it's gonna be based on the diameter of the bit. I'm gonna look at my uh, drill chart here. This is for center drills. I'm looking at a number two, three sixteenths. That's 0.1875. So I now will reference my drilling speeds, three sixteenths. That's gonna be 750 for aluminum. This is gonna be how I change the speed. The tool has to be on when you change the speed. So if I turn it on high, I'm at 1500 on the tool. So I'm gonna rotate it to where I'm at 750, okay? So we're in a good spot. Now before you actually drill, uh, every time that you drill, I want you to use cutting fluid, okay? Doesn't take much, just a little dab on there. And I don't know if you remember how deep we're supposed to drill with the center drill, but this is only gonna go halfway up the chamfer here. So that's me visually watching and being in control here, okay? So we'll turn it on high. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna press in, I'm starting to get my chips. And I'm about halfway up my chamfer. So I'm gonna grab a chip brush out of here and I'm gonna sweep the chips away. I'm not gonna use my hands because these chips can actually get into your skin and it's no fun, okay? Uh, so I always use a chip brush. If you see my hole, you can see there is a chamfer on it and there is a pilot hole that's gonna help guide our bid in, okay? So now we need to change our tool out. So I'm gonna kind of do the opposite. I gotta drop my table a little bit. So I'm gonna unlock, drop the table. Actually, I'm gonna come back up because I wanna lock in the up position. I'm gonna use my chuck key. Loosen up the chuck. The number two center drill comes out. And then the number 21 goes in. Now the same thing here, I wanna be on the shank, not on the flute. So I'll tighten that back up. So. Now just line yourselves back up. Now we're gonna be doing a blind hole here. So a blind hole means we're not drilling all the way through, okay? Uh, this is important because we do have a depth gauge that we use to grade this project, so you need to be accurate. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to set up for this, and then we'll, uh, we'll kinda go from there. So I'm gonna move this so my drill bit goes to a flat area that has not been drilled yet. And then on my drill, uh, my depth chart here, I'm gonna bring this all the way down until I'm at zero. That means I'm sitting flat on the top of the material. Now, as far up as I move this is how deep I will drill. I am looking at this, and this is a matter of perspective, is where it sits in this gauge. For me, it's about halfway. If you're really short, it's probably a little higher. If you're really tall, it's probably a little lower. Um, just be consistent. So I'll move that now up to the depth of my drill. And I know this one is three quarters of an inch by looking at my drawing. And then once I'm there, I know I'm set. I will reset my depth or I will Reset the center of my hole. And I don't know if you can see this, but as I press down, my bit will deflect just a little bit. And when it does that, it means I'm not centered in the hole. Um, so you want to get it to where it is sitting, sitting flat. Uh, if you're not, you can break your tool. So again, cutting fluid. Now, when we drill this hole, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be drilling, and we're gonna be peck drilling, okay? Or, yeah, peck drilling, because it's gonna be going down and then up. And what happens is we're going to break the chip. It makes a better hole. 
that saves your drill bit. Uh, it's just a better experience. So uh, just so you guys can see, I'm gonna turn it on low this time. It's moving much slower. So I'll look at my chart here and I'm gonna go up to 750. And then we will do our peck drilling. So I'm coming up, I'm clearing my chips. And then I've stopped, I've hit a hard stop, so I'm just gonna come up, okay? Once you hit that hard stop, don't keep going, all right? So I'll do the rest of my holes and then I will go and set myself up for tapping. And after I clean the drill. All right. So we are ready to tap. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my material in the vise. I wanna get it as like square as I can, nice and tight. Then I'm gonna take my tap handle and my tap. So there is a square post here and there is a square hole here. I'll put that into the tap handle, tighten it up nice and tight so it's not moving anywhere. And then I'm gonna get ready to tap. When I look, at my tap itself, you can see that there's a tapered edge around the top. That's gonna help us like get in the hole and get square, which is really important. So if you're not square, you're gonna run into the wall and you're not gonna have a good tapped hole. So I'll put this in and then I'll start uh, tapping it. Before I do that though, I wanna put a good amount of cutting fluid on it. If I don't have cutting fluid, uh, you're gonna run into problems pretty quick. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. So I'll do a couple turns. I'll feel the teeth bite. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at it and I wanna see that it's actually square in the hole. That's why it's important for it to be square in the vise. So I look at it this way and it's actually a little crooked this way. So as I rotate it, I'm gonna kind of put a little force on it to get it to be straight again. So I'm square there. I'm pretty square there. And now, I can't move it anymore. I've, I've bit too deep into it. So we're committed. So make sure you're square before you're going in. As we start rotating this down, I'm going to go forward one. I'm going to back off a half, okay? So that's one rotation down and half a rotation back. What's happening is it's breaking the chips in there. So as we're doing this, we're cutting the metal on the inside diameter and we're creating threads. This is gonna allow bolts to go in or screws to go in, uh, and it's a really great way of putting things together. Uh, you will hear people say two rotations down, one rotation back. That is totally possible for some materials and some taps. Um, that is not true for all things. These are smaller, you don't wanna break it, because if you do, you have to start over. The other fun thing about this, is you are tapping a blind hole. So that means there is a hard stop at the bottom. So if you keep turning when you have a hard stop, it will break. So once you've gone all the way down, it's about where you need to be, stop and then back out. Um, you should be able to see your threaded, your threads uh, and we're good to go. So this is the end of the project stuff. Again, if you have questions, please feel free to ask staff or email me and we can make it through this. Um, we're gonna head back out there. We'll talk about assembly real quick and where to put it. So once you have drilled and tap everything, you're gonna bring it back out front and you're going to assemble it.
So once you've assembled it, we're gonna go to the project turn-in bin and grab a tag and a twist tag. This is very important. If you do not fill this out, we have no idea who you are. So you're gonna put your name, your unique name, your team, and what year you graduate. And make sure you secure it in a way that it will not come undone. When you've done this, put it in the project turn-in bin, not the blue bins. If it goes in the blue bins, you'll never see it again and neither will we.